This is a beautiful symbol of Thailand. It's the elephant. It's actually also my wife's favorite animal. Now, what's uh, what's so special about this elephant? Well, the elephant was used in times of war. Hannibal, for instance, uh, took the elephant to war when he attacked Rome. The Khmer and the Thais also used elephants in their ancient wars. Now, I have a story to tell you of how one farmer that I met came to Jesus, actually became a Christian because of the elephant. He said, when he, you're in the forest in Thailand and you want to, you know, uh, cut down logs and pull out logs, no human can do that. He said, so what do you do? You get the elephants to do it for you. And he said, is there any other animal that can actually tell some other animal that's bigger and stronger than it, tell it what to do? Of course not. So we're not a product of evolution, we're a product of design, he said. And he said that because humans who are littler than elephants, smaller and less powerful, can get right on top of these guys and tell it what to do, because of that he knew that somebody made these elephants for him and of course made horses, made buffaloes to till the rice fields. We've got dogs and birds that will be domesticated. All of these things were made for us and that's exactly what the Bible says. So when he heard that God made man in his image and likeness and that he said he gave man dominion over the fish of the sea and the cattle on a thousand hill, he believed it. Now a little something else. You can tell that this is a female because the tusks are very small. If you want to see a big one, here we go. That one over there is a male. Look at how beautiful, how beautiful those tusks are. Thailand is a very diverse culture. It is actually not originally a Buddhist country. It was an animist country and we can see the remnants of this in their worship. Come on, take a look. You've got a tree here and for some reason the locals have decided that there's something holy or some kind of spirit that lives here. And so they tie these white cloths around as a symbol of their worship. A lot of Christians are afraid of this, but remember, greater is He who is in us than He who is in the world. As long as we don't believe this stuff, we don't empower it. What empowers these things is our faith in them. So you've got the cloths around the tree. You've got here Ganesh. Now he's not Buddhist. Ganesh is the elephant god. He's from India. Then you've got the Kuman Tong. This is not Buddhist either. This is the little baby god that they worship. And we're going to see how they worship this baby god. Then of course you've got the Buddhas. There's a Buddha here, there's a Buddha there, there's another Buddha over there. You come down over here, you've got King Rama V here sitting down and here riding a horse. And again, this has got nothing to do with uh, Buddhism, even though King Rama V would have been Buddhist. And then over here, you've got another God. Here you've got the Chinese God. There's an altar here. I'm not even sure who that is. And then you've got the dragons that they worship. And so how do they worship this? Well, there are two ways. What they give them are either flowers or food. Take a look at this. Look at all these flowers that they buy. And they don't give this to their wives. They don't give this to their friends. They give this to their gods. Now, the Kuman Tong loves this. Many people get nightmares and the Kuman Tong, the little baby gods, come and strike fear in them saying, I want the red Fanta stuff. And so people will bring Red Fanta and you can see it's all over. The flies love it, the uh, bees love it as well. Here you've got what's well, a bit of a contradiction. You've got chicken here which is against Buddhism. You're not supposed to uh, kill meat but this chicken has been killed in sacrifice to this Buddhist altar and this spirit altar. Another way is to offer incense. We understand that. That's from the Bible. They probably got that from the, uh, uh, the distant memories of biblical worship. And then there's fruits. You can see here all the bees. I won't get too close to that. There's a lot of bees there. But the fruits and, uh, and rice you've got over there. And all withered flowers. And there's somebody who will come and take care of this. So somebody who's responsible, they'll come and clean this up. And then uh, people just continually come here and offer worship. Now, when we say worship, by the way, this is not the same thing as Christian worship. Nobody comes here and says, you know, Kuman Tong or the Buddha, I love you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for creating me. They come here out of literal fear.